so as an international company, which obviously most major hotel chains are, are international, what are the challenges of ensuring data privacy based on this the variety of these regulations worldwide, especially since, you know, guests can be coming from anywhere. So if you're, you know, from Europe and you're staying in the U.S., you still have the GDPR uh, sort of rights, on you know, in, in your background. So U.S. people, uh, U.S. hotels have to still comply with GDPR if they have European guests, I assume, right? So is there an yeah. aggregate of all of these regulations that can be put together that sort of keep hotels and the hospitality industry on the right side of all these laws? You know, it's a great question. I I always tend to say that GDPR is the the, the best framework to start from, okay, um, because it's it's um, it's very comprehensive and it forces you to do a privacy impact assessment, um, which basically means I look at my data flow, I look at the data for a specific purpose. And I ascertain whether I've dealt with the risk the right way. Do I have the right technical solutions, the right training, the right mm -hmm. policies and procedures? Um, there's also the idea of a data subject request. Um, the other starting point is consent. So do I, you know, do I provide people with the right choice? Um, so uh, with GDPR, you don't have any consent to use my data unless you tell me what you're going to do it for you know what what sure. is the purpose yeah. ccpa on the other hand is is slightly the opposite it's kind of saying unless i tell you not to use the data the minute i share my data you you can kind of use it mm -hmm. um and and you've got other frameworks worldwide that are kind of in between my hunch is that if you use the guidance for gdpr you're probably covering most of the basis and then in terms in, in terms of technical security use PCI because PCI is super prescriptive, mm -hmm. uh, at least the current version 3.2.1, the new version 4.0 that just came out, uh, that it, we're in the transition period, um, allows you for more flexibility, but it's still reasonably prescriptive. So you take the text and you replace credit card holder data with any type of sensitive data, and it will give you a very nice framework to, to follow. And mm -hmm. you, you'll, cover, you'll cover the basis. Um, at the risk of sounding biased, um, I would say that uh, a simple framework like the five pillars of security can be overarching yeah. even above GDPR. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting you mentioned U.S. hotels because U.S. hotels need to comply with GDPR, CCPA, the equivalent of CCPA in Virginia and other states that, is, mm -hmm. that, that are coming. They probably need to comply with um, parts of HIPAA and so on. If they if they take protected health information, yep. they also have some banking requirements. Some some of them are listed uh, on the Nasdaq and so on. So uh, on the stock exchange, they they actually need to comply with uh, SEC and other uh, other regulations. So they have you know they have all of those uh, various frameworks. Some of them conflict with each other, um, yeah. and I think that the best way to do this is. Let's have a look at our risk surface within the ecosystem. Start with the five pillars, physical security, people, data, infrastructure, and crisis management. And let's work from there because yeah. that's going to cover 80 to 90% of all the other regulations, you know? Yeah, no, I was going to say, I mean, uh, all the different things you're saying here says to me that, uh, you know, to make this work for everybody it requires sort of scrapping the sort of piecemeal sort of policies that we have right now and sort of starting clean. And, you know, because it seems like a lot of these policies were were put in, in in a backwards way of like, well, what can we get out of this data? We can, well, we can sell it to here. We can do this. We can do this, you know. And then as soon as people start saying, we'd rather you not do that, then they say, well, okay, well, we'll turn turn the spigot off here. We'll turn it off here or whatever. But you're, I mean, the, the way I'm hearing it from you is like, just push all that off the table and then start out. What are the security ramifications? And then as you get to different things like, birthdays or health information or, you know, whatever, like, what can we realistically do within that that's not going to be uh, over uh, intrusive? Well, uh, absolutely. And one other thing you want to avoid is to uh, make security and compliance departments the departments of no. Uh, yes. They're not here to say no all the time. They right. are saying no because they want to protect the good name of the business and, yeah. and therefore everybody's employment. Um, 
But the reality is we can't do that if we don't have buy-in from the board of directors. Mm -hmm. And I think that the board of directors need to be, they need to be educated. Um, and I, 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 you know, I, I might have mentioned that the, the last time we spoke, but like, uh, I often talk about the, the five stages of, of cyber grief for the board, where the first <laughs> right. stage is denial, not our problem. We're here mm -hmm. to make profits. We're here to create employment, pay tax, whatever, leave us alone. Then anger. We've given you money to hire a CISO. We've hired a head of compliance. We've given you money for training, firewalls, antivirus, whatever. Go talk to those guys. Yeah. Then comes the bargaining. Uh, well, okay. Uh, other chains of hotels have been hacked. So maybe we need to look into it. And then comes the depression. Oh, we've been hacked. What do we do? And eventually comes the acceptance. And the acceptance is, it's actually not rocket science. You're probably doing 60 to 70% of what you're supposed to do. Let's do it in a proper way that can demonstrate yeah. accountability. Because yep. I think accountability is what uh, end users want to see, right? So as a... As a um, as a client of a hotel, whether it's Marriott, Accor, Hilton, whatever, yep. I want I want accountability. If something happens to my data, I can understand that there's hackers over there. But what right. I can't understand is that you didn't actually follow the rules and you left my data unattended. That I can't mm. accept. That's not great. Next time I'll go to another chain of hotels. Yep. You know, and, and, and um, I also can't accept that my credit history is going to be impacted by your lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, that's the message that the board needs to understand because it's actually a commercial message. It's not, it's not just an IT message. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com slash challenge and start your challenge right now.